In 1965, this is how an eight-year-old boy answered the phone in Springfield, Illinois. Sands residence, Robbie speaking, may I help you? If the person wasn't there that was trying to reach, he would hang up the phone and write the message on a piece of paper and put it next to the phone. This was Stone Age Connection. I saw a commercial a week before Valentine's Day. The camera zoomed in on this crowded coffee shop. You would expect to hear noise, but all you heard was silence because all the way around the coffee shop, everybody was texting on their phone. Except this one table in the middle that had a gentleman sitting there who was anxious to give a small little box to his girlfriend who sat across the table. The only problem, she was texting too. <laughs> so he tried to figure out how to get her attention. So he texted her. And the camera zoomed in on the phone, and the phone said, please, can you look up? And she looked up, and they smiled, and they connected. And he handed over a little box, and she picked out the little box, and she put, she put on a ring on her finger. And they smiled. Everybody else was oblivious to what was going on because they were texting. The camera zooms out. <laughs> and a voice wells up from the background. Stop connecting. Start communicating. This talk is all about human interaction, but specifically it's about the human interaction and the lessons learned that we took out of the crucible of conflict over the last decade in Iraq and Afghanistan. This is a jirga behind me. A jirga is a Pashtun term. It means of coming together. And village leaders come together in this council and they decide the fate of their future in consensus. What's really noticeable about this jirga is that sitting are coalition military officers, also engaged beyond connections in the communication that is life and death, that is security to the Afghans. And the really interesting thing about this is that everyone got to that patch of ground they're sitting on by the same road. This talk is about a tale of two roads, an interstate, where we get from point A to point B as quick as we possibly can. And then the metaphor of an information superhighway, where messages flow in nanoseconds around the world, supposedly bringing us closer together. But there's a second road. It's a country road. And when I grew up, I listened to John Denver. I'm proud. I listened to John Denver, and one of my favorite songs was Country Roads. It mesmerized me. John Denver sang that song like he wrote about the road. A country road goes from A to B, but it doesn't go fast. And sometimes you have to go through C, D, E, F, all the way to Z and back to B before you've reached your destination. Sometimes you don't even know if you've reached your destination. But while you're traveling on that road, you learn about the people that live alongside that road. You learn about who they are. You learn about their livelihoods. You learn about the beliefs and values that drive them. And oh, by the way, you learn about where they came from, but more importantly, you learn about where they're going. Country roads help us build alliances, like the Jirga. It helps build safety nets, and it promotes shared worldviews. But sometimes, we get off on country roads, and we meet people, and we experience their behavior, and it seems so irrational to us. And the question we should be asking ourselves, is it really irrational to us? Or do we just need to be on that road a little bit longer to understand what they're trying to do? And this talk is also about two kinds of thinking. There's a fast thinking, and there's a slow thinking. And there's an analogy to the roads that we travel. A fast thinking system is one that kicks us into gear, makes instantaneous decisions, and saves our lives. And then there's a slow system. It's reflective. It's deliberate. It's lazy, some people think. And sometimes, 
our FAST system, which is built on these mental models that we process and learn about through our lifetimes, sometimes these mental models fail us. And system two works and comes in and engages. Marshall McLuhan was a prophet in the 1960s. He wrote about a global village. And his take was that at some point in the future, we would all be connected and we would be one unified global village. 30 years after he said that, the World Wide Web was invented. And you know what? Has the World Wide Web brought us together? Or has the World Wide Web just allowed us to connect with people like us elsewhere in the world? And really, has the World Wide Web not just made our cultures more distinct and sharp? And then, when we do get off on a country road, we wonder why we've left. Because humans love to be around people who are the same. They love to be in the comfort of the neighborhood. They love to be with the people that have the same values that they do. But the world to us sometimes is so chaotic that we just have to take a country road. And then, funny thing happens. We leave the interstate and we get on this country road and we still expect to see the Burger Kings and the 7-Elevens. And we get off on the country road, and you know what we see? We see the mom and pop diners. And they don't look like Burger Kings. And our mental, mental models tell us that they are Burger Kings. And there's a conflict of interest. The Department of Defense is the largest single deployer of American men and women overseas in the world, bar none. The Department of Defense mission runs all the way from humanitarian disaster relief to peacekeeping, to stability operations, and oh, by the way, to conflict. We are winding down with Afghanistan in our rearview mirror. We're gonna be slowly drawing down resource, both human and otherwise, in a Department of Defense. But our mission, our primary mission, will be to establish partnerships around the world to establish partnerships and to sustain partnerships because we will be helping countries with their own national security. We'll be helping countries with their own human security. And oh, by the way, we will be helping our own national security. And that brings up the point. To me, to be able to do this with partnerships, to be able to build them, we have to be able to think differently. Thinking differently is this notion of cross-cultural competence. Cross-cultural competence is the ability to navigate in culturally complex areas. It's, it's the ability to transfer knowledge across cultural borders. And oh, by the way, it's also understanding foreign social and cultural behavior. And cross-cultural competence is nestled in four primary interpersonal skills. Cultural learning, learning about other people on that country road but more importantly, being motivated to learn about other people in that country road. This notion of cultural self-awareness. Who are we? How does our thinking work? Where do our biases stop? Perspective taking. Being able to reach through our worldview and touch somebody with a worldview totally different and being able to connect with that person. And oh, by the way, being able to suspend your judgment until you really truly understand what their behavior is all about. And the fourth skill is this ability to observe and sense make when we hit cultural speed bumps along the way that send us off into irrational behavior, or so we think. Cross-cultural competence will put us on that country road, and that country road for the next 10 or 20 years will go through the front lines of chaos and elsewhere. So, my simple talk, I want to leave it with three takeaways that I find extremely important for us, not only as a Department of Defense, but who we are as humanity. The first one, for God's sakes, leave the interstate. Get on those country roads. The second thing, mitigate your fast and slow thinking. And you can do that because then you'll be mitigating cultural bias that will make that country road seem all the more scary and uncertain. And the third thing, develop cross-cultural competence. Cross-cultural competence, sense-making, perspective-taking, cultural learning. 
Because when you will start traveling that country road, you will need to engage all three of those because you want to get beyond the connections into the world of very meaningful communication. Sans residents, Robbie speaking, I hope I've helped you. Thank you.